Welcome back to Yuricon 2023, where we're going to talk about one of the fantastic Yuri anime of the year in a year where we had a bunch of really amazing Yuri anime. Seriously. Um, I don't think I can remember a year where we had such a glut of incredible Yuri anime. So today I'd like to welcome Amy Martin and Sean Gaffney to talk about Birdie Wing, Gulf Girls Story which is a really weird title, but I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and an upcoming anime that is uh, heading our way called Rising Impact, which has absolutely nothing to do really with Birdie Wing, um, I think has something to do with Birdie Wing. So I'm kind of thinking there might be some uh, implications with the uh, golf girls story part of it. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's get into it. Um, our first question today is, how do you as a fan, describe Birdie Wing to people. <laughs> what do you what do you think makes it so interesting that people would want to watch it? And how do you describe it to them so they'll want to watch it? Sean, I'm gonna start with you on this one. I mean, first of all, in the shallow way that I, I use it to describe to people who don't watch anime at all, I say it's the lesbian golf mafia anime. Excellent. Um but it for my friends who do watch anime obsessively i say that this show does not speak in terms of normal story and characters it speaks in the vocabulary of anime yeah. specifically the vocabulary of sports anime and it it's just if you go in knowing that it's just incredible it's like a rich pictography of of a, the, the genres it inhabits it really is yeah, i'd say it's like it's a serious anime that does not take itself seriously quite right like, like sports that, like that flip kind of thing um so amy how do you describe it to people <laughs> i really have the unfortunately i have friends that really if for them, they want to get things dubbed. So I haven't really talked to them. But if I was talking to them, I'd be like, this is, it's a fun, like I said, you know, seriously, not serious. It's a sports anime, but it's all about the people as well. It's it's right. definitely there. It's how they get from point A to point B. I don't know. It's a serious, it's, it's, you know, it's like, you can watch it even though you have no clue about golf. Feel free to watch something. <laughs> That's true. Also, no clue about any of the other things involved. <laughs> so what I say to people, because the people I've talked to about it have been non-anime people, potentially anti-anime people, and I've said, it's about golf, but it has absolutely nothing to do with golf at all. And I think the things that I I would say to an anime fan about it is that it does inhabit the very, very rich genre of sports, seinen sports anime. Um, or sh I mean, you could say shonen, but I really think it's seinen sports anime. And, and a number of other genres at the same time in the same reality in ways that make absolutely no sense in the real world, but as a narrative could not be better. Absolutely. You know? Yes. It's, it's the layering of the all the layering of all the pieces are individually insane in a really wonderful and creative way. But when you put it all together, it makes a narrative that is so rich and so satisfying on so many different levels and scream worthy. <laughs> you know, where you're going, oh, it's, I can't believe they just did that. <laughs> it's done, it, it does like eight hilarious, ridiculous, impossible things. But importantly, it never winks at the viewer. Right. It never says, look at us, we're clever. Absolutely. Absolutely. Straight ahead, like yeah. like Eve Driver. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's No, that's, a, <laughs> as for the analogy. Um, so basically, it's a story about two girls who meet because of golf and whose lives are changed because of each other and because of golf. Um, and golf is, and I'm going to make a horrible pun here, not intended, the driving force of the anime but golf itself is never really seriously considered so in the way that you have sports anime that is about 
bicycling, uh, competitive bicycling or football or soccer or baseball, where the sport itself is so serious and so heavy and it's it's the cause of the heartbreak and the tears here it is yes the cause of the heartbreak and the tears but also absolutely irrelevant to the heartbreak and the tears so you have these pieces of things that are going on that have nothing to do with golf and yet could not exist in the anime without golf so i can understand that if you were not an anime fan it would be (laughs) off-putting (laughs) <laughs> to say the least. All right, <clears throat> let's get into the meat of this. In a series full of wildly implausible moments, um, what is a moment that you personally found the most implausible? Amy, why don't we start with you? Okay, so a couple different things. One, um, when it was actually one of the first things the first time around that i watched it was the uh catherine's golf course doing its all of a sudden here we go you know shuffle the pieces and voila we have an insta insta playable ground you know so with, i actually with, with this, green and rough and forests just and trees and oh yeah, yes and cutting the, the ponds and 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 everything else and absolutely changing. brilliant you know, and then that's what got me on the search of like, is this a possibility? And I said, I you know sent you guys that video, which I'm sure we'll talk about a little bit. But the other thing that actually got me this next round, something very small, is when um, Eve goes to Japan and she meets up with Ichina, and all of a sudden she exactly can speak Japanese yep. perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's like. <sighs> But here's, know, the but... Moment, here's the thing about that moment is that when they say, how do you speak Japanese? She goes, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, just, I just do. I you just know, do. And, and if you're watching because along, you us... know it's probably got to do with her amnesia, but it's also a beautiful hand wave. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it makes, honestly, it is. It's just, that, and that's really why the implausibilities make so much sense in the narrative is that they're all done with a hand wave. Sean and I were members of a uh, fanfic writing circle called the Fanfic Revolution. We had a we had a policy called the one hand wave policy, which is to say that as you write your fanfic or your fiction, your original fiction, you get one hand wave. You know, just one thing that you just it just is. Don't ask. It doesn't get explained. It's fine. But the more hand waves you add to a story, the less readable the story got. Some of my favorite works in 2023. I'm in love with the villainous and uh, Birdie Wing have both been like, screw that. <laughs> Let's throw all the hand waves in. And a lot of it's never explained. Some of it is, but most of it's like, yeah, it does. I yeah. mean, when we get, to, if we, when we find out the twist at towards the end of Birdie Wing in the second season about, you know, father, then you go, oh yeah, that could be possible. But then again, there's those of us that actually try to learn different languages whether it's duolingual or babble or mango or whatever it is and we're going like it's not so easy to learn yeah language. exactly exactly so sean what's your favorite most implausible moment the thing is There's i'm so actually gonna go back i'm gonna go back further than that i'm gonna go back to the very first implausible moment because when eve ripped off her mask her Chris Christina mask revealing herself in that loop in the third moment, I immediately went, oh, it's that kind of series. And everything else became acceptable because when you start with that and, and hitting the, and hitting the ball between the railroad cars, (laughs) you know, you've already started at 10. There, there's no going down from that. There really truly isn't. Um, and I think one of my favorite moments is when she um, actually breaks a hole in the rough with her ball so that the next time she plays the same course, she can use the same hole. Oh, cool. yeah. There is that. There is that. Through yes. the trees. But that's not my most favorite and plausible moment. And I should put a huge spoiler warning here. So I'm I going to spoil the hell out of this. chose this. Right. We, this, is, this is very, very hard. So... In one of the episodes, um, Eve's first mentor, um, who is clearly not good for her, is um, is playing golf against her. It's 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 that grand moment where you have to fight. 
you have to be better than your master, right? And remember that this anime is 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 a typical scene in uh, sports anime. So of course we must surpass our master. But in most anime, that would be like the final battle. This is like the third or fourth maybe. And she is playing against Rose. And Rose um, turns out to have a steampunk arm of brass and glass. And I have to say that moment, i it's one of those moments where you scream so loudly. Um, and what happens after that is, is quite significant. But that moment where not only is her arm a false, you know, a, a, a a not real arm it's a prosthetic arm it was the steampunk quality of it that made me scream i thought well there ought like, to be something there ought to be a bowie arm yes yeah it ought to have some hydraulics in there too just to perfect it was so outstanding such an outstanding moment of we really don't care about the rules by the way i'm <laughs> just you know and it was uh, that was by a, in a series entirely full of implausible moments. I mean, I don't think there's an episode that does goes by that doesn't have a single wildly implausible moment. So all the superpowers, all the, all the super the, golf powers, right? All every... the all the hits, all the all the yeah. And, and then that's what I said. Why I say it's classic? It's classic in the sense that they have to call out their attacks. I mean, we're looking at a samurai battle with golf instead of swords, you know? Um, interestingly, too, I've thought about this a lot about why do we call out our attacks? You know, in kendo, they still do, right? And when they're fighting with kendo, you have to say, I'm going to hit you in the head. I'm going to hit you on the arm. like, And then you do the technique as you're doing it. And then if you get it right, you get points. So I, I think that's it's not, that's actually not the most implausible bit, you know? Um, the implausible well, that, bit that's that, part of the vocabulary of anime again because again. you call out your attacks because you call out your attacks in an anime that's what right, of course one does yes All and they get more in increasingly elaborate too yeah okay so what so this is a series full of implausibilities what was a moment you thought well okay that's implausible but i'll accept it Sean? I, for me, and I know this this sounds odd because you would think it would be among the most implausible, but it was always wasting golf disease. That was mine too. That Especially mine. because they actually literally found something that could plausibly work for it. Yes. That it, was it, that was a moment of my opening my A hand wave, and it's like, no, actually, we researched this for once. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So I so, looked it up. I was Aoi, very... Aoi dying, Aoi having a genetic disease that kills you if you do too much golf. <laughs> <laughs> Which of course is not how this specific form of sclerosis kills you, but but this the sounds activity. like Birdie Wing sounds like the sort of series that you pass along at a bar where you drink and you come up with a plot and then you pass it to the next person who drinks and comes up with something wilder. Yes, exactly. Um, so Amy, what was your moment where you just thought, yeah, whatever? Uh, um <laughs> mine's low. I'm like, you know, it's like real, you know, but then I research you find out that it's actually real too. I mean, it's actually that whole changing golf course i mean going back to that because that just is like was so like wait really changing golf course vr i can understand but changing the golf course and then like i said i was nerdy i looked it up and there are actually multiple okay granted here in the states there are two stadiums that that have their football field that it's all on one big tray that they can move in and out. What I found and what I said to you guys is from Spain yeah. and they literally pretty much chunk up the pitch as they call it, the I, we still call it, I'd still call it the field. And they actually have a bunker for it underground and they can store it there. And then there's lights underneath the other levels that light up the tray underneath it to give to keep the real grass and it's real grass, you know, nice and healthy. And they do that so they can use that stadium for other events. Yes. And I'm just like, 
okay, it's not quite as elaborate as Catherine's place, but yeah. it the actually clockwork, the clockwork melody of oblivion grinding. I gears. saw that, and all I thought was, "Oh, they're hella rich." That explains everything, right? There, I'm going to say that as a writer, it, there is a freedom one gives oneself when one says they have more money than God. Like it's just easy, you know. It's yeah, like, I mean, it's like, what else are you going to do with it? Oh, yeah, I made my own golf course because you know the fun part was is that you hear the when I first saw the dam go, the water going out of the dam, they have the boiler. I almost there was a part of me that almost wanted to hear. I crazily Putin, enough, like right? Putina or something yeah, of like course. You know, the apocalyptic right. da, 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 or getting you know, something crazy yeah. here is gonna happen. And yeah, gonna absolutely. Uh, you know what, you know what's a, a little thing that and I'm not answering my own question first, so I'm gonna digress here. Something that I took me forever to notice was that the golf ball at the be- at the end of every opening sequence or most opening sequences is different. And it relates to the person that Eve is. They were- like it took me forever to notice that. I'm like watching that. I think it was Catherine. I think it was the the second time when she goes back in the second season and and has, does golf against Catherine, <clears throat> Catherine's proxy, and um, which will actually is probably my favorite, my, my most wonderful implausibility is when we learn that the town that um, that oh. Eve lives in is called Nafres, which is another moment where I screamed. Uh, because Nafres is the town in Madlax from the Girls with Guns on the Run series of noir Madlax and El Cazador de la Bruja. Um, Madlax takes place in two town in two places. Uh, part of it takes place in a war torn Garth Zonica, and the other part of it, it, you know, and this is lives in my head rent free, by the way, which is why I could just tell you it's Garth Zonica without having to look it up. And then the other half takes place in a nice European town called Nafres, which 20 years later, apparently looks a lot more like New York City. And Eve is living in the slums there. So um, that was the moment where I thought, well, you know, it's ridiculous. Sure. Why not? Like, OK, let's just go with it. So apparently, Nafris is actually the syllables of the katakana for France, and they just so, switched the first they two. They swapped them. Yep. Right, right. They they swapped them. Them. Right. And then also, so here's nerdy me. Here's nerdiness again. Nafris shows up in another anime. Right. Exactly. Yep. Valkyrie Mermaid. Yep. Two of the characters in that are sp- former spies from Nafris, and I'm like, oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah, just, not, I mean, really, not really recommending Valkyrie Drive Mermaid to Birdie Wing or Mad Lax fans. No, no. I wouldn't I would I would say that there's a clear hierarchy of quality there. Oh yes. <laughs> Birdie oh, Wing yes. on top. But on the other hand, if you were to do that, go ahead and watch uh Valkyrie Drive and then 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 realize get, why we're saying watch these other things. Watch these other and then and then all do watch all of the B Train Girls with Guns on the Run anime. Um, part, for a lot of reasons, and one day I'll probably do a video on those, and then uh, then watch Birdie Wing, and there's a couple other videos that we should make you watch before, uh, a couple more anime before Birdie Wing. Perhaps you've heard of one of them, it's called Gundam. <laughs> and so, there are so many Gundam references in Birdie Wing that it is been I mean, talked people, about as a Gundam. People say that it was you know, one of the two Gundam series in that season. It was. It was a Gundam AU, right? So, yeah. Sean, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Talk, talk about the the some of the, the connections there. I mean, if you're talking about the sheer mass of Gundam history, if you're comparing um, Birdie Wing to Gundam Witch from Mercury, Birdie Wing is the winner, obviously. It's got it's got Amaro, it's got Char, and I mean it's not Amaro and Char in brief cameos. They are important players to the whole thing. It's, players, it's not... are, are, are. we should we should start dinging each other for for unintentional puns. Players, it's got <laughs> Amaro and Sela having the you see romance that they never had in the original series, right. only just as doomed because it's still Gundam. <laughs> right. It's it's got the freaking golf clubs that are designed to look like Amaro's Gundam. That was stunning. And and you have Amane saying they rolled out the new type. Yes. 
It was that was and that was, and that was like everybody was poised. And when she said that you could hear the world scream like that moment, you know, I mean, even there, there's little things like uh, one point towards the end of the series. Um, what What's her name? The final boss. Uh, Ju- oh, right. Camel? Camel. Yeah. Juha, yeah. Um, looks up at the moon and says something about the moon. And that's apparently from like Gundam X or something yeah. like that. It's just it it is a series built around Gundam nerds, but at the same time, if you've never seen Gundam, none of it matters. Right, right, it's absolutely. Not required watching with the you know, even when Lily is like, you know, gunpla, you just look at what she's doing and she's you're like, oh, models, and you can just move on. And the, the, I want to just stop and say the best part about that is that whole Lily's character is implicitly you're always terrified for the next thing she's going to say because it sounds like any second it's going to be like you know prostitution or sex trafficking or something and it's always something so stupid and silly and and you feel so dirty for having thought that and she's like you know they he took the most important thing from me and you're like oh and it's like my gun block <laughs> Like, oh, come on. There, there's a moment in episode four when Viper, the Reaper, mm-hmm. is introduced that I was briefly like, uh-oh. Because Viper's character, as she is introduced, could be so bad. Mm-hmm. If, if Eve had shown any sort of fear or dismay or anything... It might have lost people, yep. but she absolutely does not. And instead, we get Viper as the uh, as the speed wagon of Birdie Wing. Yeah, I mean, you know, in another scene in trope, we turn all of our or almost all of our uh, adversaries to allies. Viper is the, the the key piece in that. You know, she she ends up being literally. Uh, you know, the dog's body by the end of the season, you know. Yes. I <laughs> beat you when you're my friend now. <laughs> yes. We're, we're talking about sports anime and Gundam, but there is a lot of JoJo's in Birdie Wing, too. There's a lot of JoJo's in Birdie Wing, too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of everything in Birdie Wing. And, that's, and I think you made a really good point that you don't need to have seen any of those things, but as they become visible to you, it just adds to the, the joy of it. Uh, like for instance, I was saying when when that first scene where the where Catherine's um, green is literally physically modulating, we have gears and grinding and waterfalls and all this stuff, and everyone was seeing Utana. I was seeing Melody of Oblivion, which was an anime that came after Utana that was done by a lot of the same team. Where they and I was were... seeing I was seeing Evangelion. Sure, absolutely. Eva- yes, Evangelion. A lot of that too, you know, right? The, the geo front. Yeah. Right, exactly. So you have th- this is a this is a theme that pops up over and over. This kind of modulated world, um, which is really fantastic. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about Eve and Aloy's journey. So the story is centered around um, Eve, who is a girl from the slums who has a preternatural skill with golf, uh, which right away indicates that there's something else going on and you know we spend literally like a season and a half of just waiting for that boot to drop <laughs> especially once we figure it out she meets a top rank golfer um Aloy and the two of them become instant um frenemies and we go through a lot with them let's talk a little bit about that Amy why don't you why don't you give us your impressions of the two of them and their their relationship and their journey <laughs> Well, it's one of those things where you definitely like you. They see each other, and they just. It, it is one of those. It's uh. I guess you know because you know, like being privileged. Has beat everybody, so for her, it's like where's it's probably getting to the point of, where's a rival? I mean, I beat everybody, and all of a sudden seeing this, like oh, there she is, somebody that I want to. I'm fascinated with, um. It really does. I, I deal with teenagers and, and with, you know, in the in the real world. Um, and it's amazing how quickly they can either 
make or break their friendships. And they can be over the smallest things, especially if it's something that they can bond over. And in this case, it's golf. Um, and it's really kind of fascinating to see it because, you know, Eve just sees it as somebody stronger that she, that's what excites her is, is the strength. I mean, Leon says it to to Rose, you know, spoiler, when she's getting, just before she dies, um, he says, you know, she's looking for, to become stronger. She's looking for. Another next- classic scene and trope, right? That's, the, the, you know, I need to be stronger. I want to get stronger. Naruto, I want to get stronger. Yeah. Um, and Aoi, of course, also is wanting to get stronger. But it's like she's on the softer side. She wants the interaction as well. I mean, she wants to get to know Eve as a person. You know, right. she, there's a little bit more of that personness that she wants to get to know her. And Eve is, Eve is a mystery. A little for somebody, bit. Yeah. For somebody who has the whole world at her fingertips, Eve is a, is a complete mystery. So that's, I think, fascinates her is that you don't fit this regular you know mm-hmm. square you know my round hole you're a square wait a sec there's something weird but you play a mean golf you know you we, we both have this interest okay. and i think you know when she left the, <laughs> the liar on the, the left the ball at the uh, you know at the first golf course when you know eve missed it um really kind of sets the whole wait connection and eve knows or you know eve's like whatever you know in the relationship side of things you know the mm-hmm. whole i you know not love you thing however in a way she does manipulate aoi at the because i'm at the point where if they're at the uh, i was re-watching and i'm at you know is it episode 10 or 11 where they're at the doubles tournament it's just about to start and you know she actually gives eve a kiss and eve's like ah! you know starstruck wait what you know <laughs> we're like oh we just added a new layer to yes. this interaction <laughs> and you know that's sort of an interesting thing because uh, uh, not to spoil too much but yeah there's a there's a lot of eerie in it but there's also it's always fraught with what their real relationship might be right and and boy does the series screw us around on that like they're sisters no they're not if they are no they're not, <laughs> if well, they are, I, they're not. I, had, I had said in uh, my review of uh on my website of birdie wing that eve and alloy are destined for each other and then the series spends the next 24 episodes trying to keep them apart yeah exactly yes yeah so so what are your thoughts about their journey and and their whole their well i mean they're they're both types in terms of their relationship beyond rivals although you see this in sports anime with rivals as well eve is the confident tease who tries not to get too attached to people Whereas um, Aoi is the thirsty for affection type who wants to be more, you know, attached. Mm -hmm. And it gets only, um, you know, each of them gets, as Aoi gets more and more, you know, kiss, 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 Eve just gets backs off and backs off until you get to that scene in the rain on the rooftop. And I will admit, there are a few Birdie Wing fans I know who really don't like that scene. Because um, I think they wanted the... relate. They, they don't think that Eve really has deep feelings for Aoi, and they point mm-hmm. to that scene. And I'm like, except there's the rest of the show. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could stop reading at any point yeah. in the book and decide that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> but it it so reminds fun. me it reminds me very much i uh pardon me for bringing up an anime that you would not remotely compare with birdie wing but i was talking about um urusei yatsura with um. someone and how uh lum shows affection versus how ataru shows okay. affection right with lum it's all about the verbal you need to tell me you love me you need to tell me i'm the one right whereas with Ataru, he would rather die than actually say things, and it's in his actions and what he does mm-hmm. 
-hmm. that the affection is showing. You're meant to understand this through my actions. Right. And yeah, I think there's a bit that of that much. with the two of them, with Eve and Aoi, that um, it's it's a it's a 24 episode struggle to get each other. Yeah, absolutely. By yeah. the end, by the flash forward, and boy, I wish this series had another episode. That oh, I know, right? It really needed one more. It rushed the ending, but by the flash forward, you can tell they get each other. And yeah. if they hadn't been interrupted by Ichina and Amane. They'd probably have still been flirting with each other for the next 15 minutes while the audience was like, yeah, 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 come on. Yeah, keep, keep it up. That's <laughs> so true. It's so true. Absolutely. Um, for me, the, the relationship between the two of them is, again, it's classic, right? We have Aoi, who's a sincere, uh, she would be in in most seinen, uh, in most sports anime, she would be the protagonist. Um, but instead, we're going from the point of view of the outsider, which is a, also a classic, uh, you know, literary trope, take the outsider. And so Eve, who has so much to prove and nothing and doesn't care about any of it, you know, she's she's like completely uninterested. And so, of course, yes, having a way, um seeking affection from her and, and being affectionate towards her does make her pull away. But you know what? It changes her in the second season. She suddenly comes out at her new school. She's like, I'm a playgirl now. And she's macking on everybody. So seeing how you could use that as a tool for your own ability to just kind of control what is admittedly in the story, a completely uncontrollable life from beginning to end. Um, it's a way for her to, to, to impose some control. Aloy was the one who gave that to Eve. She had never thought probably of that specifically it's, and really only use golf so in a sense we have Aoi to blame for the fact that Eve is such a smoking hot playgirl in the in the second season um one so, of the things uh, one of the things uh for the most part I try to ignore the fact that Eve and Aoi are meant to be 15 years old over the right you of really kind of have to but sometimes in terms of the fast development of their mindset and their characters they really do have that like last year of middle school feel yeah. to them yes yeah or first year of high school where everything is just everything is so intense you know it's just it's so 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 much um sean you had a great question let's let's talk a little bit about this what is the best birdie wing meme I, i'm just going to say i'm literally wearing a birdie wing meme t-shirt that i found on the internet that i think is absolutely slayed me um but what do you think uh sean we'll start with you it was your question the very first um or the very best meme from birdie wing well, as I as I I came up with five examples that I think are the most iconic of the um the memes, which are in relative order of appearance. The forty eight inch always forty eight inch driver, and the the pose, which is of course meant to mimic all of those poses with swords from every anime Absolutely. ever. Right. It's it's again reminding you that this is a seinen sword fighting competition. Right. With God. and 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 it's also a, it's also a dick joke, yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and Amy already brought up the the Pac Man golf golf ball with the tear and the liar yes. on the other side. Um, Rose's crystal Bowie arm. I <laughs> as I said, I think that's less the meme. The arm itself is not the meme as much as the reaction of the audience to it. <laughs> to it. Yeah. Um, I'll kill you in golf. That actually so is my because favorite. Because that's, right that's one of the cases where the subtitlers made it a meme. Yes. They did a fantastic Because they phrased it like, I'll kill you in Minecraft. Yes. Yeah. But I'll kill you in golf definitely was one of my absolute favorites. It just completely was bad shit. It just, it just, went, it just went all over. And, and you just kept using it. You know, you couldn't, you you couldn't stop it, yourself. It, you know? it keeps on giving. And the last <laughs> one, this was a sort of a la late comer, but it was all over everything for that episode that it appeared was Sarah saying, um, you know, golf is, golf killing, is killing them it. all <laughs> because so it's the, uh, that may be my pick because it is the best example of how utterly serious this show is about the stupidest, <laughs> most ridiculous things. The idea that all of these people have been suffering for years and are dying because of freaking golf. Right. Right. Because of golf. Amy, do you have a favorite meme? I'm 
uh, all the like, some of the ones you mentioned were like I'm like oh yeah I think I remember seeing that one. Um, I don't have one. I I'm very bad at remembering some of the memes. Uh, oh, that's even, <clears throat> but uh, it's just uh, I was just thinking. But kind of one of the funny things is just how easily, um, you know, when they when or the the meme of you know uh, when Eve was. Uh, hitting on some of the girls you know, the first day and she hasn't seen Aoi and she hits on the girls, you know, hey, I haven't been here. <laughs> yeah. And you see all the sparkles, 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 sparkles. I think yeah. it's more that kind of- Yeah, the know, shoujo the sparkles. We actually had yeah. a couple of shoujo references in the first part of the second season. In fact, when we get to the girls' school, a lot of the um, the people that she's fighting are such classic shoujo competitive oh, yeah. types. They, you know, they we had a couple right out of- any number of shoujo I right mean. i mean aso narai, narai is just all over that you know it's just all over that you you can see and you know. then they are promptly run over like so much roadkill that was actually stunning that we you know we set them up at the end of the first season like these are the rivals and then they're gonsville um, honestly the thing that I, I i think that really i like the best was simply the the rainbow bullet the different colored um yes shots the one that slayed me absolutely flat out i could not breathe for about half an hour was the green bullet the first time when we see her playing it when the, she's doing mini golf and it just bangs off all the corners into a, a hole in one i thought i was gonna die <laughs> I, just, I absolutely I, you know the fact that they're named and have the colors you know they're just they're outstanding but the green just completely killed me that first time but yeah and then the things we get to all of the the rainbow and then we add a couple extra colors because we had needed a couple new golf balls but did you notice that in japanese when she's doing her bullets they're all in english they're yeah. blue bullet they're green yeah, bullet. Uh, however when she first does purple it's yeah. aoi yeah you're like i'm like i watch i'm like oh wait a second wait what yeah and that's because Oh, he taught her that particular one, that which is a slice. Right. And because frequently this show is as subtle as a 48-inch driver, yes. Absolutely, <laughs> to the back of the head. Well, it's, we're talking about the sports anime thing. The one thing that this show <laughs> is missing is the underdog who ha is, I guess Jinguji comes close. The one who's the normal golfer. Mm -hmm. who uh, ends the up captain. Yeah. yeah, the captain who ends up being the one who, you know, teaches Eve to actually, you know, golf from bad places because, right. but for the most part, this is just really strong people fighting other really strong people. Yeah, but Jinguji ends up being sort of, yes, exactly that character. And she has that that extra pathos, you know, the the she would be the beloved senpai who gets injured and can't continue in any the, other series the tragic golf carpal tunnel yes right, exactly golf is apparently a terribly dangerous sport yeah absolutely um so quick question before we we start wrapping up um who is the best character amy uh, i actually like ichina i actually like the caddy because she's coming from she's like i know i don't do golf however I can read what's going on here. I'm really good at this. Yes. And I want to be able, my skills can help your skills. Right. Really and truthfully. And then when she sees Eve do her thing, she's like, yeah, I can. Yep. You know, she has that amazing self-confidence. Yep. That you're just like, you go, girl. Yeah, really. Sean, who's your favorite character? Well, that's, there are two very different questions. My favorite character is Hawaii. I I just... I, I just love her. I love her reactions to everything. I love her struggles. But the best character is Eve. Um, without Eve, there's no series. Eve drives everything. Eve is why you come back to this series every sure. week. Sure. Yeah. That's fair. But uh, I'll say, actually, I, I think the best character is Ichina as well, because she's she is a normal Ichina girl. Is wonderful. Absolutely outstanding. She has so many wonderful qualities of being like you think she's going to be the puppy dog. She sure is not the puppy dog. Um, she is an amazing caddy. She is a, a she is exactly what she says she is, which is the most outstanding caddy in the world. And in most other anime, she'd be somebody who was swept up 
in in we eve's wake or always wake and she's not she steps into the wake she's like i'm going with you you're going to be better because of me and i'm going to be the best in the world and you're like holy shit who's this girl and she does and she just does and i just found that yeah and then she follows yeah. Eve to Nefris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, which, there is an, e- there's an episode that I think shows there. off the best of both of them because the episode where they go to fight in the modular golf course again. Right. First of all, Ichina's reaction to everything. Like, it's, your, it's you, What right? is going on? It's, but this is so insane, it, right? Once the golf starts... It doesn't matter anymore. Right, right, All of a sudden, right. she's the perfect caddy again, and it's Eve who's out of her element with the you know the the, the brand new cheating scheme. <laughs> and but Eve smashing the camera and saying that she wants to do real golf that was fantastic. That may be my favorite moment in the whole series I, because yeah. it is because everyone was so hyped to get back to the mafia, to get back to Nafres, to get back with the, you know, goofy golf course and all that. And here is Eve telling you, no, you are wrong. This is not the real golf we want. We right. want to go back to the high school tournament to, you know, the, the golf norm. I say normal golf, but it's pretty yeah, way. To, to, you know to what I mean. real golf. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let to me real play golf. real golf, not this stupid gambling mafia crap yeah there's this distraction from golf. and we aside from them being a deus ex machina at the end to prevent eve from winning we never really see them again right the mafia. exactly um i will i will say yes it, and they are very wonderful deus ex machina at the end the, the and the resolution of that was actually really intelligent and kind of normal like we're gonna suspend you for a few years and then you can come back and it's like oh like Okay, it doesn't have to be like you're gonna die or not gonna exile or something. Rose, yeah, you know. But I want to say I do want to say that um, the the final golf course she fight she plays at is also kind of its own in bits of insanity. I'm mean, like that. The, there's that one that hole that's shown in the opening credits of the second season where it's like literally on a cut piece of rock <laughs> separate from the which main I had always <laughs> assumed was a metaphor. No, it's real. <laughs> Yeah. It's a real, it's actually a real thing. So, um, so that's wonderful. Um, so one last question to wrap up this wonderful conversation: Which is the superior Gundam AU, G Witch, or Birdie Win? Sean, I, I mean, I, I, G Witch is probably the better series overall in terms of Gundam, right. but in terms of giving Gundam fans what they want, I think it's Birdie Win. Fair. Amy, what do you think? Well, considering that the only time I've ever watched any Gundam was actually the first season of you know of, of Witch, um I I I beg off mostly because I like <laughs> I like them for different things, but also because you know, in the sense that Birdie Wing gave us our girls and didn't say it's up to your interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was are... Bondi. That wasn't the anime. Man. We all have to be angry in that, the right direction. It's the... Bondi who got yeah. got wonky about I know. that. But I thought that was real. You know, just as a total aside, is that the whole Pakun? I'm like, how could they get Pakun on? You know, I'm like, oh yeah, it's Bandai because with Birdie Wing is Bandai actually part of? Yeah, so yeah, it, it, it's all owned by of... the same company. So Speaking that's why they could actually use Pac Man as a symbol. And I always right my. My oh. favorite obscure reference in the whole thing. Do you remember when uh, they have the virtual golf in episode five? Yes. And they yes. give Eve this ridiculous cat girl outfit. Yes. The cat girl outfit is actually Lucky Chloe from Tekken. Nice. And virtually, oh. I, I had to have that explained to me on Reddit. For, for, virtually nobody got it. And it was like, for you few Tekken nerds who had to be watching Birdie Wing, just like, you know, for you few Madlax nerds who had right. to be watching Birdie Wing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they really did a fantastic job of bringing in a, a whole lot of weird little references. I would say, I wanted to stop and, and go back to the question. One of my favorite actual scene, though, was there's a scene early on when when um, Eve gets back to Nafras and we have an entire... 10 minute segment 
where she's apparently posing for 1980s album covers in New yes, York City. The music video that's straight out of Bubblegum Crisis. Yes, absolutely. And so it's but it's but it's a classic late 80s album covers sorts of things. And like you know you you knew exactly if you were around in the late 80s, you knew exactly what you were looking like. Oh, there's the the thing where she's under the water tower on the roof, and here's the one where she's sitting near the pipe structure, and here's you know looking out over the bridge and that kind of. It was all such classic city post posing for album covers. That was actually one of my faves. Um, I, and as for which one is the better AU, I'm going to say G-Witch because it actually is really more of a Gundam. But th this one, I think, Sean, you nailed it. It absolutely gives fans what they wanted. And again, gives you the screaming moments where you're like, oh, it's Golf Char and Golf Amaro. And, you know, they didn't even try. They don't hide it. It's not like clever. It's like, look, here's Char and Amaro <laughs> playing golf. <laughs> Like, I mean, like... my my theory for how this got made in the first place is that after 30 years of the writer toiling away in the anime mines, he basically <laughs> won the jackpot and said, as my reward, you get to let me do whatever I want. Right. And Bandai's like, go nuts. And, and he this did. Is the result. Yeah, he did. Definitely. Like, because of course the writer about. has written yeah. half of all anime yeah right he's written a bunch of stuff exactly all right so let's have final thoughts on birdie wing amy final thoughts um it's very rewatchable that's one of the that's a key thing i think is that it's very rewatchable and even watching it knowing the twists that happen it's still fun to anticipate and to find all the things you're like well or even if it's sometimes to find a loophole, like hair color with with uh, Oi, and I'm like, neither of her parents are that color, and yet she is, but nobody makes a comment about it. You know, to that kind of funny thing, to it's just fun. It's just fun. It, it's campy. It's fun. Nobody nobody, I mean, people die, but they don't really, die. you don't see it. It's, it's all good. I bet nobody gets hurt. <laughs> I mean, some people die. There are some people that die, but it's off screen. Some people are blown up by rocket launchers. <laughs> yeah, but that's off screen by the time they actually land. You know, that's the mafia. Those are the bad. The bad guys die, except for Rose. That's kind of a sad thing. Yeah, but she, I mean, it. She, she dug her own grave. Well, I think but with I mean, the Rose, it was it was a, a case of you know. If you don't see them get killed, then they're not dead. If you don't see the body, they're not dead. Like they, they were like, no. She's dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. Was, everyone time. was waiting for her to come back, and I'm like, "Oh, pretty sure she's dead." Yeah, yeah. exactly. But Sean, what are your final thoughts on Birdie Wing? Just be nice. It'd be nice <laughs> if there was actually a a post, you know, OVA or something that would be kind of fun. But it would. Know. It would. They really needed one more episode. And they did really rush that. There's one more episode. They would have. It would have been. I think the producer in one of the interviewers said they they had an interesting thought for like a next generation thing or something, but I'm not. Sure, where they're going with that? <laughs> hmm. Not like not like the children of Eve and Aoi, I'm thinking, but something no, different. It's just a different. No, my my final thoughts are um, number one: uh, try not to get yourself into indentured golf servitude or caddy <laughs> servitude, and uh, do watch Birdie Wing. Thank you. All right, thank you both so much. This was. A lot of fun. Um, I'm going to just say, if those of you who are watching this panel have not uh, yet watched Birdie Wing, I think we all can say absolutely uh, in sync there, that you must have watched we didn't even Birdie touch Wing. On. We didn't mention the weather prediction. No, we didn't really mention that at all. There's just so there, there's a lot of things we really didn't even have time. There's so many things. Yes, the that, other caddy. Yeah, I mean, they're just, I mean, the fact that, that, that each has a, a, you know, a, a certified weather weather moment yes that's a thing that will totally work um but this, yes. there's just all these little pieces of nonsense that are tied together in a way that that make you make me as a writer weep for having you know, to have that kind of skill you know if i could ever yes. write something half as good as that i would count myself really excellent as a writer it's it's yeah, all going so back good. to what i said at the start it's written in the vocabulary of anime and if you speak anime you will love it Yes. And if you don't speak anime, you still might enjoy it. But it's like watching, 
I don't know, European noir, you know, you're going to miss some of the references, you're going to miss the key moments, the things that it's referring to that you just didn't know, but, but you'll know it's there, you'll be able to have these dramatic pauses, and you'll think, I probably missed something. <laughs> you know, I, will, I will note, if you are a ser serious golfer, you might not like it. Right. Um, and also, I will also note, before we wrap up, that the golf club at the girls school is a real golf club. It's an actual real golf club that exists underneath the Mount Fuji. That was one at evening's worth of work for me. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> oh, I think I remember you saying that. That you're yeah. like, this is real. They really yeah, it's, it. I mean, the picture was perfect. They clearly just lifted that picture and just sort of drew a school behind it. Like, that was perfect. Well, a lot of people were surprised that Jack Bunny, the uh, the sponsors of all the outfits, was in fact real and not made up for Birdie Wing. Right, because it's such a goofy name. Right, exactly. Well, again, thank you both very, very much. Um, this was a fantastic revisiting of a really fantastic anime. And um, I want to thank you both for being part of Eurycon 2023. And thank everybody who is watching here uh, for being part of Eurycon 2023. And we'll see you again next time on Yuri Studio.